Hey guys, it's the Learning Simmer here, and today I'm doing a Stardew Valley tips and tricks video, especially for when you're first starting out gameplay. So basically, these are just tips that I wish that I knew when I first started playing, which would have probably helped me, you know, do a little bit better in the beginning and maybe save some more money, if that makes sense. So hopefully these tips will help you guys as well because they definitely helped me. And if you have any other tips that you um, have learned through playing, feel free to share them in the comments down below. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you want to see more videos like this. And also feel free to check out my Twitch channel. I'm there pretty much every day at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I stream Stardew Valley and I also stream a lot of other games as well. Um, so there will be a link in the description down below. And let's just get right into the video. Okay, so for my first tip, I would recommend um, that you learn the map when you're first starting to play. Because once you know the map, you'll be able to understand where to find things much easier. Um, eventually you'll just kind of learn, you won't have to constantly be checking the map to find certain people. But it's really good in the beginning to just learn where everyone is because there are certain places that you'll have to go to quite often. So if you press M on your keyboard, you'll be able to access the map and it'll show you where everybody lives, it'll show you hours of operation for, cer for certain shops, it'll show you where the bus stop is, it'll show you where the mines are. It's just really useful to check if you need to do maybe a certain quest or a certain task, or if you're trying to find a certain villager that you want to woo, it's good to know where they live because you'll know like, at least at some point throughout the day, they will be somewhere around th their home. Um, so, just a recommendation to keep yourself familiar with the map and therefore you'll be able to find things a lot easier. So my next tip for you is since the new version, I think it's version 1.5 came out with the update, you can now purchase phones from Robin. These are really useful because you can use these phones to learn um, hours of operation. You can see their stock at any time. Um, and you can also see like the cost of everything, which is really good, especially for Robin's place, because if you don't know where um, she is, uh, you'll see on the map in a second, it's really close to the mines where you can find her shop. And that's where you would purchase the phone and also where you purchase farm upgrades and building upgrades. So the phone is really useful because you it come up with a little menu where you can select a number and it shows all the places where there are shops. If you click on a name, for example, you click Robin, it'll show you um, her hours of operation first. So when I first called, um, I think not in this, but in my gameplay, it said that the store was closed. So I was just like, oh, okay, well, it just tells you, you know, what time it's open. Um, so this says, hey, it's Robin. My business hours are from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please come by then if you need anything. Beep. So I thought that's all that it said. But if you click through, it then shows you um, all the stock. So it'll show you the building upgrades. It'll show you your cabin upgrades. And it'll also show you like just the items that she sells um, normally. So like stuff to upgrade your house not necessarily like upgrade but to make your house look a little bit nicer like decor and like furniture items you usually purchase it from robin so it's really useful especially when you're first starting so i'd say once you have 2000 coins if you know you're struggling with figuring out like what materials you need to build certain items and you're constantly having to go to robin's place to check anyway it's a really good investment because you don't have to constantly be going back and forth you just have it like right in your cabin so this is just me going through the store inventory you can't purchase items from your house but you can see all the stock and the hours of operation so that's really useful okay so my next tip for you is when you're working on your bundles so basically before i start Bundles are these things you can complete to like kind of progress the storyline. Um, it's to, I guess, re not ref I guess refurbish, but also to like bring back the town's community center, make it look really nice. Um, again, you have to complete bundles. So you can either go to the community center each time to check um, what you need for each bundle, or you can just check your inventory to see what you need. Before you can even access the community center though, there are certain cutscenes and things you have to go through in the beginning before you like unlock 
the ability to do the bundles. But once you do, if you press E on your keyboard, if you're playing on PC, it'll open up your inventory and you'll see a little icon of a tree in the top right that if you hover over, it'll say community center. When you click on that, it'll show you all your bundles that you need to do. It'll show you which ones are completed. It'll show you what items you need for the ones that you haven't completed. I'm currently in year two in my current save that I'm showing you. So I only have one bundle there, but if you are still starting out, you'll be able to see all the bundles that you have unlocked at that point um, and see what you need for each bundle, which is really useful. So you don't have to constantly be going from your house to the community center, back home to go get the items that you need for the bundle. If you, if you forget, like you won't have to be going back and forth every second because you can just check exactly what you need, grab it, and then go bring it to the community center. But I also have another tip in terms of, you know, bringing items to the community center. Okay, so my next tip is as opposed to taking every item once you find it that you know you need for a bundle to the community center immediately is to create a chest that you put all your bundle items into. So because you can check what items you need for your bundle, it's really easy to just, as soon as you find an item that you know you need, just drop it in a chest. If you find another item you know you need, you drop it in the chest. If you even think you need it, just put it in the chest because you can always check um, afterwards to see if you actually do need that item or not. But that's what I did once I learned that it was a little bit more useful for me to like get through my bundles really quickly. Um, I just made a chest. I put all my items in there that I know that I needed for bundles. After a time, you tend to like remember certain items that you know that you need. Because if you're looking for something for like a long period of time, you'll just remember that you need that item for your bundle. And then as opposed to taking it every single day, I would choose a day throughout my in-game week. Usually like Sunday or Saturday or Friday, you know, just like you play through a week, you collect all the items and then you go to the community center and you just drop off all the items at once. It's just much better, especially if you complete an entire bundle and have it in your chest. You can just bring all those items at once and you just get the reward from that, you know, little piece of the bundle. Um... Which is nice because you don't have to be, you know, constantly waiting. Like you drop off one item and then it's like you still have two more items left that you need to bring. And you're just bringing them one by one. It's just easier once you find all the items that you need for a bundle, you just take it all at once. So you can either do it by just bringing like everything from the chest or just anytime you complete a bundle, you bring it into the community center all in one time. And it just, it just is more satisfying to get the reward right away. Also, just a little bonus tip is one of the bundles involves just spending money. And I think your best bet would be to save up for the most expensive one and then work your way down because it's easier to just get rid of the ones that are more expensive first than to just constantly be having to wait until you have enough to get that most expensive bundle. Because I did the cheaper ones first and then it ended up biting me in the butt later because I couldn't afford the expensive ones um, for a really long time. So my next tip kind of relates back to the bundles in a way is um, on every Sunday and every Friday, a traveling cart appears in the little space below your farm near Marnie's Ranch. So I'm showing where you go to get there because it's not really marked on the map. It's just like a random area that she spawns, but she spawns in the same spot every time. So in my current game, it's Monday, so you won't actually see the cart. But on Sundays and on Fridays up until 7 p.m., the traveling cart will appear here where you can purchase rare seeds. You can purchase items that are out of season, like certain crops that are out of season. And you can also purchase items that you may need for your bundle or just like cool furniture items for your cabin. It's really useful if you're trying to complete a bundle and maybe you can't necessarily find one of the items. Or if you see an item that you know you need for your bundle, I would just grab it right then. Um, if you have the money to do so because it just makes things easier um, rather than having to constantly go out and look for that one item especially for like fish um, like it'll usually sell like rare fish or certain things like I don't know sometimes it'll sell you like the rabbit's foot like things that are really rare to find and you know you need them for your bundle it's really good to check the traveling cart to see if she has it in stock and you'll be able to purchase it and you know, drop it into your bundle whenever you get the chance. Okay, so my next tip is that it's okay to hoard items in this game because 
A lot of the time you'll find that items that you didn't think were that useful end up being useful in the future. So right now this is my cabin. I don't have that many items in here because I also keep items in my... Sorry, this is my shed. I also keep items in my cabin and I also keep items in like the farmhouse and um, in the chicken coop. But a good thing to do is to keep all your items together, especially in the beginning. You know, organize your items, but also keep everything that you find. Which may seem like, well, why am I keeping all these items that I don't need? A lot of the items you may realize later on that you need for like a recipe that you need to make um, in terms of like a crafting recipe. So like an item that you need to make, you're like, wow, I had all these items, but I sold everything. Um, I would say just save it because you never know when you're going to need it. And then if you realize you've gone a long period of time and you never use that item, then go ahead and sell it and make money off of it. But otherwise, it's good to save items. For example, pine cones and maple seeds along with acorns. You can use those to make the little field snacks. You can use sap to make fertilizer, which increases the quality of your crops. So like these things that are really like common that you might be like, well, I'm going to find them everywhere. It's okay. It's good to stock up on those items because when you need them, which you will need them quite often, you'll have them already, you know, in supply. You won't need to be looking for them. So my next tip kind of relates back to the last one, which is to save all your items, including trash. So you might be like, why am I saving trash? I don't need trash. It's trash. <laughs> like, I'll just throw it away. But when you get um, the ability to craft recyclers, you can turn your traff, your traff, <laughs> you can turn your trash into more useful items. So an example would be is you can take newspapers, you have a chance of turning them in, either into cloth or into torches. If you have broken CDs, you can turn those into refined quartz. And they're all, I think regular trash turns into something, I'm, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it is something that is more useful to you than, you know, a pile of trash. Um, I think it's usually like stone sometimes, like just one piece of stone, but it's better to turn that into something that you can use than to just throw it out and have it have no use to you. Um, especially since refined quartz can be used to make like furnaces, I think, and also just it's something that is used in other recipes. Um, so be sure to invest in a recycler once you get the chance and save your trash and turn it into something that is more useful to you. Okay, so my next tip for you is to save fruits, vegetables, and turn them into wine, jelly, or preserved vegetables because it is more profitable to you. So in the beginning, when you first get your crops, it is probably better off, especially since you won't have the crafting recipes to make these items, to just sell your crops, you know, straight away. But once you have the ability to make kegs and preserve jars, it's better to turn your fruits into wine or jellies because those sell for more money. And you can also use them um, for certain bundles and you can also use them to gift to certain villagers if you would like. But again, overall, it's just more profitable to you to turn them into like these goods as opposed to just selling them as the, you know, crop itself. Also, if you have a chicken coop or if you have um, a barn that's upgraded so that you can have um, cows, then you can... Um, I actually don't think you need to upgrade it to have cows. But if you have a barn, you'll be able to milk the cows and turn the milk into cheese with a cheese press. Um, or you can turn the eggs into mayo if you have a chicken coop. And you'll be able to make, you know, mayonnaise with the mayonnaise machine. And again, those things sell for more money than if you were to just sell the milk or the eggs or the fruits or the vegetables. Sell them once you turn them into these goods that are more profitable. Okay, so my next tip is to invest in money earlier on within your year in a barn and in a chicken coop. So that way by winter you have hopefully a fully upgraded barn and coop. The reason why is because in the winter you don't have as much things to like make you money, which I noticed when I was playing. Like the only thing you can really do is you can either go fishing, you can go mining, or you can take care of your like farm like your barn or your coop and the barn you'll be able to get wool which you can turn into cloth and you can sell that or you can turn that into clothing um 
you can get milk from the cows and from the goats and you can get truffles from the pigs but not during the winter from what I've seen. You can also get eggs from the chickens, you can get rabbit's foot very rarely um, if you upgraded your barn enough. Um, and you can turn the eggs into mayo, you can turn the milk into cheese, which is really useful. But if you don't have these things upgraded, and you don't have anything to like make you a lot of profit during the winter, then you're kind of like in a lull until you get back to spring because you can't really plant anything in the winter unless you have a greenhouse or you have the little planter pots. And even then it's like, it's always good to have something else that's making you a lot of money. So the barn was really useful to me in the winter time because I could take those things and sell them for profit or turn them into other things. And you get these things daily. So it's always something to do. So what I would do is throughout the year, I'm like maintaining my like crops and stuff from spring until fall and then in the winter i'm mostly focused on my barn obviously you still have to like you know make sure that your animals are being fed and like keeping track of it throughout the other seasons but it was nice to just be able to focus on only the barn during the winter and like turning these things into things that will make me profit okay so my next tip is to always carry the hoe with you because you can use that on the little spots where you see like worms coming out of the ground and you will usually get um like clay or certain like seeds sometimes or certain like forged items that you would get in that season that you're currently in but sometimes you will also get artifacts which are really useful because you can take that to the museum and when you um give the museum a certain amount of items you Earn rewards for it so it's good to constantly be doing this when you see these little spots because the more artifacts you have the more chances of getting a reward you you have and if you're playing in co-op these rewards are gifted out to everyone that's like in your current save which is nice so if you have three people playing in your co-op you're gonna get three of these rewards which is really useful in making your farm more profitable Okay, so my next tip is when you are starting out in the mines is to try to get through as many levels as possible. You could um, attempt to like get every single rock or get all the ores every single time, but it's not going to be as useful to you, especially in the beginning, because you don't have a lot of energy throughout the day. And you also won't have access to a lot of food in the beginning, besides if you were to eat like your own crops, which is better off if you sell them, or if you were to purchase stuff from the saloon, which is fairly expensive especially when you're just starting um so it's good to try and get through as many levels as you can and try and get through every fifth level so that you unlock the elevators why is that because if i'm at level 50 and i make it to level 54 but it's really late in the day and i know i have to start walking back to my cabin or i'll pass out in the streets um then it wasn't really a beneficial day because although i may have gotten some ores I still have to go back to the mine and um, unlock the 55th level, you know what I mean? And I'll have to start from 50 again. However, if I were to make it through by just keep on going until I make it through to like level 60, and that's my goal for the day, I start at level 50 and I make it all the way to level 60, um, that's more beneficial because when I go back, I'll still be able to go back to any of those levels. If I go back to 50, I can just keep going down until I get to like level 54 again and get the ores from that level or like any level I want. But if I don't unlock level 60, then the next time I go back, I'm going to have to play through 55, 56, 57 again. So when you're just starting, try your best to get through the entire mine as quickly as possible and then you can go back to the mine anytime go to whatever level you want and just collect ores and geodes and it'll just be easier for you okay so my last tip for you is to make sure that you're using your tv every single day this is a tip that even i still need to follow because i definitely didn't when i first started playing i kind of just ignored it but if you click on the living off the land, you'll usually get either tips for the day or you'll get recipes that you can make in the kitchen. For example, I got a tip that day about one of the crafting recipes that you can make and how it's useful to you, which is really good because a lot of times you'll have like items that you can make and you're just like, but well, when am I ever going to use this? It's really nice to like get those tips. And also it tells you the weather for the next day if you click on the weather report. And if you click on the, if you click on the one about like 
the luck. I don't know exactly what it says, but it will tell you usually how lucky your day will be. So it'll tell you if the odds are in your favor. If you click on the little fortune teller button, um, it'll tell you if it's going to be a good day or if it's going to be a bad day, especially in terms of like mining or in terms of if you have a rabbit, whether or not you may get rabbit's foot. If your luck is good, it increases your chances of having a good, like profitable day. But if your luck is bad, then it probably won't be as good. Um, so yeah, just make sure to check your TV every day so that you get this information. And it's also good with the weather, at least for like your crops, you know, if it's raining, you'll know if it's going to be sunny, you'll know if it's going to be bad weather, which helps you like plan out your crops accordingly and whether or not you need to like water them that day. So yeah, that's it in terms of the TV. So those are all the tips that I have to share with you guys right now. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below or if you have any other tips you either want to share yourself or if you have anything else you want to know from me, even though I'm still definitely not an expert on this game, then leave those in the comments. Feel free to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Um, this is really fun and I can't wait to get the Let's Play started. So I hope that you guys will enjoy that too. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.